And you can see over here, Bong is giving instructions to some of the team leaders for EDSA. Uh, of course, Bong is now assigned permanently to EDSA. I'm not exactly sure what's going on because they just arrived, but apparently this lady's been robbed. Uh, she's pulled up to the MMDA uh, base here to ask for help. What they're going to do is put one of the enforcers in the driver's seat, have the lady move over to the passenger seat and then take her to the nearest police station. I think they're also going to go and inspect the gas station to see if they can find anyone that fits the description given by the lady. Uh, although it really is a police matter, it's not exactly standard procedure for an enforcer to get in someone's car and drive it for them, but the lady's very shaken up and crying. It looks like there might be more to this uh, physical aspect. I won't go into details. So now here at police station 10, I'm going to be very careful about how I record because I don't want the lady to feel uncomfortable. And you see the lady is now speaking to police. Uh, hopefully they'll be able to check the CCTV, work out who's involved and then capture them. The lady is now being taken down the hall. Uh, she'll be assisted by female officers. And uh, yeah, just have to hope that they work out what happened and capture the bad guys. So back to Edsa, which was the plan for today. You can see there's really a heavy flow of traffic. Um, buses are all pretty heavily loaded. You can see lots of people standing up. Uh, it's moving at least. Um, like we all know, Edsa is over capacity. There's more vehicles than it's designed to handle, but if they can just at least keep people moving, that's, uh, that's the best you can hope for right now. Here's an example of a small problem here. Uh, all of these buses want to take the overpass. Um, so what they're doing is they're queuing to try and cut over to the other lane but then it's blocking the bus lane and over here you can see one of the enforcers trying to signal this bus to move over uh, he's meant to be in the two lanes here all city buses must always be in these two lanes uh, but they don't always follow that you can see Bong has now gone over to the driver as well because he's stubbornly trying to cut back over there and over there another bus they're pulling over telling him to get inside the yellow lane only Pizza P buses and provincial buses can use the third lane. City buses must always be in these first two lanes. Buses are not the only problem on EDSA, but they are one of the bigger problems. Uh, what they often do is they maneuver themselves to a position where they're blocking lanes. Uh, like right now you can see one lane is pretty much unused because one of the buses down there wants to go into the third lane. Um, so they're not the only problem on EDSA, but they certainly are one of the bigger problems. And that bus that wanted to go in the third lane is actually a city bus. So he shouldn't be going there anyway. All of those enforcers told him, no, stay here in the second lane. But he's still trying to cut across. And look, he's laughing like it's funny. Uh, but the problem is he's causing traffic. And like I said, city buses shouldn't be in the third lane. So again, another enforcer will move in and tell him, no, you're not allowed. This is a problem with the buses. They're really very stubborn. Imagine you're an enforcer on the ground. It's very difficult to deal with these buses. You tell them to do something, they ignore you. And the problem is if you stop them and issue them a ticket, you're going to add to traffic. If you look at many of these buses, you'll notice they're actually riding on the side of their tires. Why? Because they're so overloaded with passengers. Uh, like this one, look at how many are stuffed into the middle. Here's another example. So many people. If you look at the front tire there, you can see it's squashed down. It's very, very hard to see this every day. Uh, that's why it's also hard to see the crackdown on Colorums, on Ankas, on Habul Habul. Because during rush hour, Public transport cannot move enough people, um, that's the reality. So that's also why I'm hoping to see them uh, give provisional authority, at least to the Chlorum vans, because they're really moving a lot of people every day. So it's good if they can, you know, legalize them, regulate them, yes, but legalize them. And then once there's enough buses, once there's enough trains and everything else, you could say, okay, no more of these uh, vans. But for now, they're really helping people get around. And that's the goal of this, you know, LTO, MMDA, DOTR, LTFRB, the ultimate goal, yes, reduce traffic, keep people safe, everything like that, but move people, that's the idea, move people, get them from point A to point B, get them to school, get them to work, get them to their families, and uh, yeah, I think that's the important thing to remember. These armored vans shouldn't be in the yellow lane as far as I know. Uh, you might remember before there was an accident where one of the enforcers was trying to wade them out of the yellow lane, and they actually ran into the enforcer and killed her and uh, not necessarily this, this specific brand or this specific company, but one of the armored trucks. Of course, another problem is bus terminals that are along EDSA, uh, where they're going out, going in, it can cause a lot of traffic. That will change soon. Um, there won't be any bus terminals on EDSA eventually. What they'll do instead is have uh, interchange in the north, interchange in the south, and then just bus stops along EDSA, so there won't be any more terminals along EDSA. 
maybe by next year sometime I can see one of the enforcers is issuing a ticket over there maybe open door uh, there is a closed door policy along ETSA let's go and verify I just verified now with the enforcer the violation is loading unloading uh, doing it along the road instead of a proper bus stop of course one of the problems with ground level enforcement is it stops the bus in the road which can add to traffic and congestion but like I mentioned, if they do it by CCTV, the ticket goes against the vehicle, but not against the driver. And the driver doesn't have an incentive to change the bad behavior. Um, but what they are looking at doing, MMDA, is digitizing the ticketing process. And over here, they pulled a car to the side. They're issuing a ticket for coding. Shouldn't be on the road today. And you can see Bong is now guiding these two armored trucks out of the yellow lane. Uh, the yellow lane is for public transport, like the buses. Uh, the idea is to prioritize mass public transport so people have a reason to ride the bus. Uh, yes, it might not be as comfortable as owning your own car, but at least it should be faster because the yellow lane is exclusive to public transport. In the distance there, I can see there's a bus that's in either the fourth lane or the fifth lane. Uh, the problem is later what he'll do is try and cut across. And then because private motorists don't like the buses being there since they're not allowed to be there, they'll fight with him and then it will just add to traffic. Uh, let's see if I can capture it on camera. So there you go, you can see he's on the very far lane. Um, it's really gonna cause a lot of traffic when he tries to come back. In fact, I can see he's already indicating now. So here's another bus, you can see city operation. Uh, what he's done is he's now blocked two lanes because he wants to go to the third lane. So all of the buses behind him are now stuck. And these are the kind of viral pictures that you see all the time where a bus is like this, blocking all the traffic. And uh, yeah, just, uh, very difficult to control because they know they're not allowed on the third lane but he's gonna sit there and block these two lanes until he gets there uh, basically he doesn't care about anyone that's behind him so here's another example of one of the problems bus is unloading in the second lane problem is if a vehicle drives along like this they'll hit the passengers that are unloading and many passengers do not look before they go down they just go down then run across so it can be quite dangerous and there's some cute little kitties over here. It looks like someone's giving them some rice to eat. And look at this the bus on the very far lane again. It's very hard to get the buses to follow the rules. Right, but what I've noticed is there are some commuters walking along here now because buses are unloading them. And then what are they going to do? They're going to go here and cross in front of, what's this, free active lanes of traffic. Uh, but they don't care. They don't care about the safety of their passengers. Uh, they'll just put them down and then say, okay, good luck, uh, try not to get hit. Some people will say, don't just blame the buses, also blame commuters because they're the ones saying, hey, I want to go down here. Uh, the thing is, the bus driver is in control of the door. If he does not open the door, the passengers cannot go down. Um, so for me, they are the ones responsible. And uh, for me, I think there should be higher penalties for this because they're really putting their passengers in serious danger. Another bus in the first lane. They ask for the license, then send them forwards to collect their ticket further along the road. So I don't know if you can see, but there's a bus in the first lane, second lane, third lane, fourth lane, fifth lane. So basically every single lane, there is a bus. Um, like I mentioned, buses are not the only problem, but they're really a very big problem. Uh, very difficult. And like I mentioned, if you do ground level enforcement, it can add to congestion, add to traffic because you have to stop them, get the license, write the ticket. They are looking to digitize the ticket so they can issue them faster, but it's still not ideal. Um, I think really the penalties need to be much larger and it needs to go directly to the driver, not just to the bus company like it does right now with non-contact apprehensions by CCTV. If they start feeling it themselves, the drivers, then I'm sure they're going to start following the rules, especially if it costs you 2,000, 3,000, 5,000. Um, because it's very simple, just stay inside the yellow lane and only load and unload at bus stops. Um, you don't accidentally go out of the yellow lane, you don't accidentally do illegal unloading. It's very purposeful act. Here you go, a Pizza P bus, same problem. Over here you can see this red bus is now leaving the emergency bay. He was just issued a ticket. Uh, at least there's an area here where the buses can be pulled in so they won't block the road. So here you can see they're guiding another bus into the emergency lane to issue a ticket. The driver's already handed over his license so he knows what's going on. Here you go, enforcer asking again for another license to issue a ticket. Send him forwards and he can collect the license from further along. Yung, yung mga bus po, uh, mm. yung, pag nagtapuluan po tayo rito, mm. sir, ng bus, may mga papasok po rin na kumakanan. Minsan lang bubuntis po yan. Kaya minsan oh. pinibigyan po namin spasyo dyan para oh. yung kakanan makadiretso po. Eh, lahat ng bus nandun sa ano eh, fly over eh. Anong ginagawa namin dyan? 
Doon may tao po doon, sir, eh. Ha? Dapat may tao po doon. May Yun! Tao po doon. Diba? May tao po yan, sir. Asan yung tao doon? May kasama kami doon kayo na, sir. Baka may ilo na lang. Ay, no. Pero, bumaba pa. Nagsasakay. Opo. Body po kasi kami dyan. Ngayon yung dalawa po doon. Tignan ko, naranado kasi ako na, sir. Yung body, hindi yung dapat magkadikit. Yes, sir. Diba? Alina yes, dito. O, oh, ito. Tignan mo yung problema dito. Anong problema dito? Ha? Anong problema? Sir, yung mga... Bravo na ang may ilalim. Oh. Ang nag-swerve, okay. sir. Okay. Nasaan? Yes, Saan ba dapat ang brabo? Dito sir. Ayun! Yes, sir. Diba? Yes, sir. Ito, tama ba ito? Mali ako, mali po sir. Ayun, yung nasa kitang yun, tama ba yun? Mali po lahat yan sir. Mali lahat, diba? Ano gagawin natin? Aprehend po. Aprehend, diba? Yes sir. Nag-aaprehend pa tayo? Yes sir. Saan? Sa ngayon sir, eh... Wala. Gagaguhin tayo niya kung di tayo mag-aaprehend. Yes sir, gagaaprehend po kami. Kulang po kami sa manpower. Hindi totoo yan! Hindi ako naniniwala kulang kayo sa manpower. Gawin nyo yung trabaho nyo. Yes, sir. Ha? Yes, sir. Kahit mag-isa ka lang, gawin mo yung trabaho mo. Yes, sir. Ha? Tingnan mo, oh. Ginagago tayo ng mga yan. Yes, sir. Kaya tayo nagkaka-traffic dito. Yes, Ang sir. Ang gagawin lang natin, i-apprehend. Apprehend yes, sir. Hindi pa pwede yung tataka-taka tayo dyan. Nakakawayan lang natin yan. Yes, sir. Tama na, ha? Yes, sir. Hindi tayo dito para tumingin lang. Dito tayo, tayo magtrabaho. Yes, sir. Papira, tingnan mo. Nakita mo, nandyan ako. Ha? Kukunin ko na yung lisensya, papatikitan ko, balik ka ulit. Simple, di ba? Yes, sir. Kunin mo yung lisensya niyan, ibigay mo sa naninikit, kaya mo sa maninikit, kaya mo sila matagalan. Yes, sir. Di ba? Yes, sir. Kung gusto nila, tubusin nila doon sa MMDA yung lisensya nila. Yes, sir. Kasi hindi tayo pwede ng ganyan. Tingnan mo yung katarataduan ng mga yan, kakainin kayo ng buhay niyan. Kaya nga po, sir. Eh, Nakaprehend naman po. Nino! Kami po, sir. Nakatulayan, eh, ubos lang po na kayong ticket. Ano ginagawa na? Tingin wala tayong ticket. Pagkira niyo po, sir. Ayun. Pinahan ko pa ba naman sabihin? Hindi, sir. Nagkira nga po. Ngayon pong pag-out po, mag-green niyo po. Nakaubos lang po na hapon ng Black Friday. Naman. Ang dami natin dahilan. Kaya wala tayong nakakomplish dahil ang dami natin dahilan. Di ba? Yes, Gawin natin yung trabaho natin. Yes, sir. Ang lak... Florida, yes, ang laki ng inaasahan ng tao sa inyo. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ilagang pa lang po. Ilagang pa lang po. Ah, yes, yung body mo, ikaw pag nakuha ng mga lisensya niyan, ibigay mo sa body mo, balik ka dyan, kunin mo ulit yung lisensya. Ako lang po, may ticket, sir. Ako, ako lang po. Oh, ikaw balikat siya, ang kumuha ng lisensya. Magiging niyo pa ako. Kailangan pa ng ano? Kailangan pa bang i-memorize yan? Hindi po, sir. Hindi natin dahilan ng manipis tayo. Wala tayong tao. Hindi dahilan yan, ha? Papasukin natin lahat. Yun ang tamang paraan. Hindi tayo kulang sa tao. Wala tayo sa pumapasok. At saka puro yung mga pumapasok, puro dahilan. Now, of course, there are also motorcycles that don't stay in the correct lane, but it's very hard because their motorcycle lane is also mixed with four-wheeled vehicles, uh, even buses. So it's very, very difficult to push them into the motorcycle lane when it's full of cars and buses. Now, aside from buses being outside of the yellow lane, the other problem is private cars going in the yellow lane, especially during peak hours, they often use it as an express lane. Um, for them, the penalty is 500 pesos, the private cars. Next year, it'll be 1,000 pesos. But for the buses that are outside of the yellow lane, it's only considered disregarding traffic sign, which is 150 pesos. That's so low. No wonder they're not following the rules, and no wonder they don't listen to enforcers. The good news is that the MRT seems to be operating a lot better recently. I know the DOTR have been working really hard on that. I think they also added a couple new trains, um, you know, the, the old ones where they had to go through testing, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, it's always good to see. Now you might look at this and say, well, there's traffic because of high volume of vehicles. And you'd be right, that's part of it. But look over here, the bus that's in the wrong lane trying to cut back across so we can get to the bus stops, blocking the lanes causing traffic. And then if you go on this side, you'll see that these buses, what they do is they try and get into the third lane, even if they're not meant to be there, and they'll block this lane and they'll block this lane. Now, I don't want it to seem like I'm picking on the buses because there are other problems. For instance, private cars often park along EDSA. Uh, you see that all the time. It can really cause a lot of traffic. Uh, the motorcycles can also be a little bit reckless when they swerve between cars. Not all of them. There are a lot of good riders out there, but there are many bad riders also. Um, so it's something that everyone has to work on together. We all have to think like what can I do differently? What can I improve to try and make it a little bit better? Um, because we all make mistakes. That's that's reality. We all make mistakes um, But we just have to think ahead like what can I change? What can I do differently? Now you might remember in episode one I showed that there were a lot of people going here in the road then walking along and getting on the buses 
and in fact some of the employees here at these businesses were saying the same thing that it can be difficult to get inside because people will crowd up here then they walk down there and they go on the bus so these guys here are actually the anti-jaywalking unit uh, they'll be issuing tickets to any commuters who go in the road um, they'll also be doing other things not just that but that's one of their roles and since the MRT has been working quite well recently that's how I'll be going home today there is a little bit of walk to the station and then from the station but um you know walking's okay a little bit of walking sometimes it's faster than taking a car or anything like that anyway because of traffic so of course if you have your beep card with a value on it all you have to do is tap in and then later when i get off the train i'll tap out and it's as simple as that no need to fuss around with coins or notes or anything like that yeah. of course with the PUV modernization program you'll soon be using these on jeepneys as well actually some jeepneys are already using them uh, but it will be gps based so depending on how far you go is how much you pay to scratch what i said about not being too busy it's still very full uh, so i just wait for the next train it's okay because there's plenty coming along now of course one of the nice things is that while you're waiting you have free wi-fi either from smart globe or dict so at least you won't get bored while you wait and if you're wondering about the speed of that free wi-fi you won't be disappointed look at that over 200 meg what i usually do is i'll open youtube or netflix or something like that download 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 and then even when you're away from the wi-fi at least you have something to watch uh, upload speed also very good so if you want to do a live stream of course you have to be near the MRT station or at least on EDSA because it's EDSA free Wi-Fi but uh, impressive speeds